actually comes from the definition of sets. A set is a collection of distinguishable elements, right? So distinguishable means we can distinguish either two elements are equal or not equal, right? So that's part of the definition of the set. But sometimes we want to say two elements are related or similar or somehow equivalent in some sense, although they are not equal. Okay, here's an example. Let's say we have a function from a to x, and we say a, in a and b are related, related if this holds. Okay, so we have a function from a to x, this element and this element, they are different, but we define that they are related if they are mapped to the same element in x by f. Okay. So if this is the case, we say a and b are equivalent and write like this, this A and B are equivalent. Okay. Now, if we define this relationship, observe the, uh, the following three facts. For every element in A, A is related to itself. You know, it's easy, because A is equal to A, so that means f of a is always equal to f of a, right? So by definition, a is related to a. So they are equivalent. Well, this is almost trivial. And second, if a is equivalent to b, then b is equivalent to a. Simple, right? So if this holds, that means f of a is equal to f of b, but uh, equal sign is kind of commutable, right? If something is equal to something, the letter is equal to the former. So this is same thing, right? f of b is equal to f of a, of course. But that means b is equivalent to a. So the order doesn't matter. And three, if A is equivalent to B and B is equivalent to C, then A is equivalent to C. Okay, so if A is equivalent to B, which is equivalent to C, that means A is equivalent to C. Okay, proving this is an exercise. But just follow uh, the same you know, argument like this, similar argument to this, and it should be easy. So actually, these three properties are important for classifying uh, elements in general. So we define this uh, equivalence relationship like this. So let's say A is a set. And we define a binary operator, this, between elements of A, is called, uh, and that is called equivalence relation. If this operation satisfies the following conditions, one, it's called reflexivity, that is, each element is equivalent to itself. And two, symmetry. If A is equivalent to B, then B is equivalent to A. And three, transitivity. For A, B, C, if A is equivalent to B and B is equivalent to C, then A is equivalent to C. Okay. 
those three properties just like we explained in the previous example if these three conditions are met this relation is called an equivalence relation okay so equality in the ordinary sense is an equivalence relation you know of course a is equal to a if A is equal to B, B is equal to A. If A is equal to B and B is equal to C, then A is equal to C. So this is an equivalence relation. And I just solved this exercise. And here's another example. Uh, consider the set of integers. Let's define this A. 3 lines B. Okay. If and only if A and B are both even or both odd. Okay. So in this case, we say 2 is equivalent to 0 because they are both even. And 3 is equivalent to negative 101 because they are both odd. But 2 is not equivalent to 1 or 3 is not equivalent to negative 8. So, this relationship, this binary relationship, is an equivalence relation. So, in order to prove this, you check these conditions. This should be trivial. And this is, of course, is trivial, right? And what about this? Okay. So, this is an equivalence relationship. By the way, this tilde is just a, just one way to write equivalence relationship. You know, this is not like a proper noun, okay? So, just like we call any element of a set like A or B or X or whatever, this may be like tilde or this uh, triple line, maybe equal, uh, maybe something else, you know, like like this, or in any sign, you know, can be defined as equivalence relationship, like this, or whatever. Okay. This is actually the basic uh, basis of classification of anything. Okay, so what do we mean by similar, for example? Okay, here there are many exercises, and here's one example. Let's define the relation tilde on Z, Z. Uh, integers such that for A and B, A is equivalent to B if and only if A times B is not equal to Z, uh, 0. This relation is symmetric and transitive but not reflexive. Okay. So that is, we do not have A uh, equivalent to A for all A because 0 times 0 is 0. So 0 is not equivalent to 0 itself. So this is not an equivalence relationship. This is not equivalence. Okay, and similarly, uh, inequality in the ordinary sense, in real numbers, is not an equivalence relation. So what's wrong with this? Oh, 
by the way, let's go back to this example. So, can you see why this is symmetric and transitive? So symmetric means if A is similar to B, then B is similar to A, right? So this is, uh, by definition, this means A times B is not equal to z 0. So this means B times A is not equal to 0. So of course, if this is the case, this should be the case. And transitive? If A is similar to B and B is similar to C, that means A times B is not 0 and B times C is not 0. In that case, so we want to say A is similar to C. So that means A times C is not 0. From these two, can you say this? Yeah. So if this is the case, then A is not 0, right? From this. From this, you can say C is not 0. So if they are not both 0, I mean both of them are not 0, so AC is not 0. So this is the case. So this is transitive and symmetric, but it's not reflexive because of this exception. Okay. Okay, an equivalence relation on a set A can be used to classify the elements of A into disjoint and exhaustive subsets. Okay, uh, do you remember the meaning of disjoint? So, if there is A and we can classify the elements of A into disjoint, so let's say maybe it can classify into three parts, this part, this part and this part. So disjoint means they do not have any overlaps. And exhaustive here means this partition, these three subsets in this case, covers entire A. So the union of these three subsets is equal to the entire A. So that means exhaustive. And if a collection of subsets satisfy these two conditions, disjoint and exhaustive, then the collection is called a partition. Okay. And here's a definition. Let S be a non-empty set with an equivalence relation, tilde, defined. So let A be an element of S. The subset A, S A of S, is given by this. Okay, so this subset means all elements of S such that this element, each element is equivalent to A. So A is a particular element. Okay. So this subset is a set of all elements that are equivalent to this particular element A. So this is called the equivalence class determined by or containing A. Okay. Of course, because of this, reflexivity